Hi everybody, thanks for joining me again. This is Simon Ward from the triathloncoach.com and today we are talking about tapering for Ironman. So um, for most of you, you've probably got uh, three to four weeks left. If you haven't, if you've got a bit longer, then um, this is applicable for the last month of your training. So here goes, I'm just gonna move out of the way and start pointing at things on the board. Um, so I would reckon that your taper is probably two to three weeks long. So uh, you see I've just drawn a little graph here. Um, we've got the big week shown here. So that's probably about um, finishes giving you three weeks to go. At the start of the taper, I'd recommend that what happens is you basically drop off a cliff. Um, for Depending on whether you've got two or three weeks um, in here, you probably have between three and five to six days of very little training, maybe only 30 minutes at a time. Um, c coming back into the race seven to ten days before, you can pick up the volume. Um, anecdotally, most people seem to report that they feel better physically, and um, they don't have that sort of coldy, fluey type of feeling you get here when you, when you cut down the training. They also feel better coming into a race with a bit more training under the belt. Not because they've improved their fitness, but because it just it just makes them feel a bit better, they don't feel as sluggish. Um, so you build the volume up probably around about the last weekend, coming into last weekend, um, but still only maybe a couple of hours a day. We're not talking going back into a big training week here, and then uh, dropping off again as you come into the race. Okay, how much you do, um, and and the actual volume of the training that you do is is entirely dependent on um, what what you've been doing in your training before. But I would suggest that uh, you have some other goals um, for, for tapering other than just improving your fitness. And here's why. Um, your fitness may improve uh, by about 1-2% to during the taper. And that primarily occurs because of rest and recovery. So you get that extra little bit. Um, they did some research around the Sydney Olympics. They had swimmers who were tapering for an event. Um, they did. They had a big meet in Melbourne just a couple of three weeks before the Sydney Olympics. They were able to gather times. Uh, two weeks to three weeks later, they were able to take the times of those guys racing in the Olympics. And, and this was the sort of improvement they got. Okay, So I'm saying it, you may improve your fitness. Um, one thing's for certain, it takes about six weeks for adaptations to occur within the body, so you're probably not going to improve your general fitness, you're not going to improve your power very much, you're not going to improve your anaerobic threshold or your work capacity, so um, don't, don't focus on that. Here are the things to focus on. Reduce your training volume. Okay, so you need to be cutting down the volume, as in here, this relates to volume of training. Um, if you've been used to training twice a day, then continue to train twice a day. So maintain the frequency and maintain some intensity. It's a very big mistake to think that as you come into a race, you need to cut down the intensity. In fact, um, uh, you may even want to do a little bit of faster than race pace intensity here. So at least maintain what you were doing. Maybe increase it a little bit. Helps to maintain blood volume, but definitely don't drop the intensity. And here are your training goals. Okay, number one, you're looking to maintain your current fitness. Now, I, I say that's really, really important that you try to maintain your current fitness. Um, and, and here's why it's important that you maintain that fitness. One of the big mistakes that people make is they think, right, well, I'll just get in that last six hour ride. I'll just get in an extra day of training before I start my taper. It really isn't going to have a great deal of effect for your race. And if it does, it'll be negligible. You'll probably lose that by faffing around in transition. So um, my honest opinion, based on years of, of you know, experience with athletes, is it's better to be slightly undercooked on race day than to be overdone. And really, you're not going to notice the difference. So um, resist the temptation to, to sort of just do that one last little thing. And it's something we'll come back to when we do uh, the next video, which will be all about the final week. So just a few more things before we go. So maintaining your current fitness, that's your goal. Just manage everything and try not to get ill or injured. So you're staying healthy. You need to be trying to repair muscle and connective tissue. You probably noticed that as you've picked up your training, you've started to get a little, just little niggles, little aches maybe behind the knee or around the ankle in the hip. Um, so you're wanting to repair 
those, those muscles that have been so good to you over the last few months. The connective tissue, the tendons and ligaments, repair those so everything's nice and pliable and bouncy on race day. Replenish the fuel cells. Um, we'll come into carbo loading a bit later. You don't need to think about that now. Just keep eating what you're doing and, and just watch your weight as you, particularly as you get into this period here. You need to adjust your calories to make sure you don't start to gain any weight. Okay, so um, think about that, particularly around here. Um, and also recovery. Um, I've rubbed that off there, but that says recovery, mental and physical. Remember, you've been training for six to eight months for this event, I would imagine. So um, physically you'll be tired, mentally you'll be tired. And, and once you replenish those here, these are the things that lead to this potential improvement in recovery. And so it comes down to this last thing here. As I say, it's very unlikely that you're going to improve your fitness coming into the race. But as you feel fresher, as you feel fitter and more bouncy, one of the things that will go up a lot is your confidence in your ability to perform on race day. And that's worth probably another 10% another in your fitness. Okay, so um, there we have it, a brief overview of the last four weeks of your training. If you've got any questions, feel free to uh, send them to me. The, uh, my email address will appear just below here in a second. And um, yeah, good luck with your training. Remember just to manage the situation as it is. Be comfortable with the fitness you're at and uh, stay healthy and look forward to the race. Okay, I'll see you again in about two or three weeks with another video and this is how to approach the final week before the event. Bye for now.